Before we move on to looking at the Dublin Core DTD, let's look at a DTD for something that will be probably more familiar to you, which is HTML. And we're going to look at the DTD for HTML version 4, version 4.01, actually, though the differences between those two things are pretty slight. Um, HTML version 5, incidentally, is the most recent uh, version of HTML, but it does not have a DTD uh, for a variety of reasons that I don't really want to get into, but basically has to do with the very different architecture of HTML5 versus all previous versions. So, HTML version 4, let's look at the DTD. I will link to this and to the the specification document that this is a part of um, in the, the links that I provide for this video. So at the top, you get, again, these comments that we saw before, and you get this header, which is a little bit of an explanation about what it is we're looking at. We get some uh, discussion of the public identifier doc type HTML, it's public, you know, W3C is the owner, it's for HTML version 4.01, it's in English, etc. I'm going to skip an awful lot of this. We want to scroll down to the text markup section. And again, I'm going to skip a fair bit of this, but I just want to point out some of the um, HTML elements that you're likely to be most familiar with. So first of all, these definitions, right, these definitions here are what are called parameter entity definitions. And the reason they're called that is that each one of those lines declares an entity and its parameters. Simple enough. So the first one that I want to look at is this. It's declaring the entity font style, the different types of fonts that are possible to declare in HTML. And you're likely to be familiar with these two, I for italic and B for bold. There are other font styles that you can use in HTML that don't get a lot of use. TT, for example, is teletype, you know, big and small, but, but italic and bold are the two that certainly get the most use. So what you've got here is a three-part declaration. First, the fact that this is an entity is declared, the name of the entity, font style, and then the parameters of that entity. Uh, similarly, we've got the entity form control, which says these are, this is an entity that has to do with, with web forms, and then all of the parameters of the form control entity, input and select and text area and, you know, label and button. A button is exactly what you would expect, right? A button with some text on it that you push in HTML. A text area is a, a block where you can type stuff in, right? All of the different kinds of things that you see on a web form, and those are the parameters of that entity. And here's another element that you're likely to be familiar with, the element BR which is a line break or, you know, in uh, the old fashioned jargon of typewriters, a carriage return, right? It is a forced line break. BR has the list of attributes of core atters, the core attributes, which are generic attributes that are shared across entities. And they are these. ID, class, style, and title. So if I click on core atters, we get the set of generic attributes, entity, 
core atters, the core attributes, and those are ID, class, style, and title, and here's some description of what they are. This is, you know, a text field. This is C data, which is like PC data, which we looked at in the previous video. Now let me scroll down a little bit more to this block here, the anchor element. And the anchor element gives us hyperlinks. We have the element A, which is A for anchor. And one of the attributes of the A element is this, href, which gives us a href, which should be familiar because when you provide a URL, that provides a hyperlink in the document. So a href and the data that it requires is a URI and the explanation is URI for a linked resource. So again, what we have here is the element A, a list of attributes and a set of attributes with for each one the type of data that it requires and some explanation. Let me scroll down a little bit more and show you another element from HTML that you're probably familiar with, the image element. What we have here is the element image, IMG, and the list of attributes of image. So image source shows you what the URL is for the image to be put into the web page. Uh, the alt is the alt text, the alternative text that will show up if the image doesn't display or that displays in a pop-up when you mouse over an image, for example. Um, you can specify height and width to control the dimensions on the page of an image, etc. So again, you've got a declaration of the element and a list of attributes and the data type that they require and some description of what those attributes are. Now, it should be fairly obvious that there are lots of pieces to a DTD and that I'm not showing you many of those pieces. Uh, I will link to some explanations and tutorials on how to read a DTD, and those are good supplementary material here. But I just wanted to introduce you to very basic look at the HTML DTD, because first of all, HTML is probably more familiar to you than Dublin Core at this point, so that you can start to see how things are declared in a DTD, things that you're already familiar with, right? You've probably written HTML code, you've seen the source code behind web pages already, so those familiar pieces of HTML, now you can start to see how those are declared in a DTD, what that DTD looks like to enable the functionality of the HTML elements that you're familiar with.